Welcome with a new episode of Market Reporters with my colleague Martin Tate and myself, Casper Huisman. Every week we look back on the stock market and we will discuss with you uh, the questions that investors asked us. If we look at the, at the last week, uh, of course, there was a lot of uh, a lot of talkings about the support package, uh, European support package. Also, Trump was in the news again about the tensions in Hong Kong and also about his liability of the social media in the U.S. Also, uh, an IPO this week in the Netherlands on the stock market of Amsterdam of Dow Egberts under the name GDE Peets. The coffee company went public again. Uh, Martin, what were the, the questions that you heard the most from our investors? Yeah, you, you mentioned the word support. Um, well, one of the sectors, one of the industries that, that of course needs a lot of support is the airline industry. And then specifically um, what you see now is that airlines trying to get support or trying to reduce costs and, and whenever, wherever they can. So what they're doing is basically they're selling their own shares. They go to commercial banks for loans and they also get government support. This week uh, Lufthansa got a, a loan that they have to pay back uh, for at least 50% to the German government of 10 billion, 9.8 billion. You saw Latam Airlines got a, a loan for uh, almost 1 billion euros. So what you're seeing is basically that um, initially, if you talk uh, in, in airline language, you see that they're trying to keep the, the planes in the air basically, to keep the, the companies going. And now the next phase for these companies will be how can we avoid that they don't crash? Eh? So they keep them because they, of course, they're over, over leveraged, they get a lot of debt. So the total debt of the, to of the airline industry has gone up 28% this year up to 551 billion euros. Um, what is happening with the uh, suppliers of uh, airline, uh, uh, of, of basically planes? This specific case, Rolls-Royce was in the news. They're going to uh, cut uh, 9,000 jobs in, in the UK and uh, also they're going to reduce costs um, for about 1.3 billion pounds. So talking about Rolls-Royce, we think about cars. Kasper, you, uh, you dove into the uh, car industry uh, specifically. This yeah, week. because I want to mention Rolls-Royce is only making the uh, engines for the plane. Exactly. BMW is making the engines, the engines for the cars. For cars. Um, yes, so talking about cars, a lot of questions are uh, uh, we hear from clients about the car industry. So I want to talk a little bit about that sector, so the automotive sector. And I don't want to talk about BMW, I do, I do want to talk about it, I'm not going to talk about it. I'm going to talk about Renault, the French uh, car producer, and Ferrari, the Italian car builder. Um, they were all, both in the news last week. Renault is suffering, or, of course, almost all the car companies are suffering. And they uh, announced that they uh, are going to cut the next three years 2 million euros. And they're going to fire, unfortunately, more than 14,000 people out of the 100,000 employees they have worldwide. They, hey, they have nowadays a cooperation with Nissan and Mitsubishi and they decided that every brand will focus on a different area of our globe. And, um, and also one of those three companies will be in charge of the development of new cars and that will, that will realize a cut savings of 40% of the development costs. Um, if we look at the stock price of Renault, it uh, went down from 42 euros uh, the beginning of this year to the lowest point of 15 and it's now trading at around 20 euros. And if you look at the earnings per share, that's a really important one, it's estimated that this year they will lose around 5 euros per share. Um, next year will be a better year with a profit of 3 euros and that makes a price earnings next year of 7, only 7 and the year after even 3.5. So that can be interesting for investors. Um, if you compare that to an, with another car company, is Ferrari, then if you look uh, directly at the stock price, in the beginning of this year it was trading at around 150 euros. It also went down, it went down to 115 euros, but now it's back on the same levels of the beginning of this year, 150 euros. If you look, the, the market still thinks they're going to make a profit this year, a profit per share of around 3 euros, an increasement of profits, so next year they will have around 4 euros, but that makes, and that's a huge difference if you compare to Renault, of 36 pri price earnings yeah, yeah, for next yeah. year. So it would be a lot more expensive? If you Relatively, yes. 
So why is that possible? Why you see in one sector in Europe, it's, they're both based in Europe, why is there a big difference uh, between those car companies? And I wrote that on my second uh, page. If you look a little bit deeper in the fundamentals of uh, Ferrari, then you see that the return on the investment capital is around 20%. And the average of the other car companies is around 5%. If you look at the operational margin, it's around 24% and the other ones are 6%. And if you think about those figures, then you can say that they're not really a car producer, they are more in the area of luxury goods. And if you compare the same fundamentals with important luxury producers like Louis Vuitton and like Hermes, then you see that there are almost the same figures. Hermes has an operational margin of around 30% and Louis Vuitton of around 21%. So, conclusion, if you look at one sector, because people uh, they like so to look at the sector, yeah. you see even a lot of differences between car companies in this case in one sector. So, please look a little bit further. I know you are doing that and if you need support with that, come to us and we will help you. Thank you again for looking at this weekly overview and hope to see you next week.